We're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. Here we are. Hey guys. Uh, yeah. With it's... all their comments, there's nobody on yet. Nobody. Nobody. We're done, bro. We had a day in the sun. It is Wednesday, isn't it? It is Wednesday. Yeah, yeah. yeah all day. It's all day. <laughs> Back to third shift at the Waffle House. Bill McKayska, first on board. Hey, man. Oh, What's yeah, happening, Bill? Bill? Josh Baskell, hello. Nicholas Fisher, Nikki Farley, Old Quinon, Carmen Truck. Chris Freemason? Yeah, hey. yeah, yeah. Hello. The regulars. The regulars. Yes. So, what's going on, guys? What's going on, say? It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's, 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 it was like it was the, the week just was like it just blew by. So. Uh, it did. It did. It did. It did. But it's yeah, getting Kiwi's truck 318 all busted down and cleaned, and it's all looking, you know, actually, if it wasn't full of mud, it'd be a nice engine. <laughs> so it's gonna it's gonna be nice. And you got all that covered. Oh, it's, it's all covered up to date as of two hours ago, the last video put out. So the budget, the whole thing. So yeah, Doctor Art's hot rod rehab and Kiwi's clam chowder and good like chowder. 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 Yeah. Yes, Josh, I did get your name right. Uh, let's see, find and fix it. I got a question. I just saw a prototype for the old 442 W34. I think that's what. Uh, I think it was why I think it was why it is a Hemi. Is it a Hemi? Oh, is it a Hemi? I thought that was a Chrysler product. Well, no, no, no. A Hemi is just a generic shape of a combustion chamber. So the, the first the first production engine that would be considered a Hemi was 1906 Peugeot, right? So and, and like motorcycle Harley Davidson's have had Hemi chambers filled up combustion chamber since 1906. Something. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're 19 teens. No wait. When did they when did they go to the what was the first? Since Hitler was a private they've had. Yeah, so it's the thirties, right. Yeah. Uh yeah, so no, it's just it's just a generic there's just hundreds of different Hemi head engines, but the Chrysler is just known for it. <coughs> yeah. Kind of they made it famous really, didn't they? They made it the catch for on. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um I spot a garage. Ooh, uh, I need your advice. I have a 1952 Dodge with a manual trans and fluid drive. Any tips on getting it repaired or rebuilt? No, 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 no. Yeah, I don't. No idea. Uh, yeah. I don't know if anyone even tries to fix them anymore. For you guys that aren't familiar, right? The fluid drive is a manual three-speed transmission that has both a clutch and a torque converter. What's what's well at what? Malfunctioning on it is the are the gears boogered up? Is it, is it clutch fried? Is it what's right. what's the malfunction? Then you maybe you can dive a little bit deeper into the problem. And it might not be so bad. Yeah, I so they had a they had a clutch and a torque converter. Yes. And you 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 release the clutch and engage it. Yes. You you use, use the clutch to shift, but you didn't have to when you came to a stop. You didn't have to put it in neutral. Huh. You could just accelerate away. See, Mazda played with that years ago, like in the seventies. They had like a five-speed transmission in like the RX fours and fives oh, okay. and stuff like that. But instead of a clutch and flywheel, it was there was a torque converter. Yeah, well, that's what the Chrysler was doing that in 1952 or 1953 is when they started. Yeah, but that didn't have a clutch. All it had was a torque converter, and you just shifted oh, okay. through the gears. And it was a cheap way of getting, you know, like there was guys importing them from Japan from the wrecks, and mm -hmm. you just throw out the torque converter and put a clutch in. Oh, and it becomes a regular, oh, become, okay. became a regular five speed. Mexican spec is here. Hey, man. Hey. Uh, I started garage. I think it's a combo of the trans and torque motor. Yeah, but what's it doing? You know, honestly, right? Because you're saying you're saying it's hard to find parts. You know, honestly, I would just throw a torque plate in it rather than screw around with that thing. Leave the pedals on the floor. Yeah. 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 Either, either throw a manual trans in it or, or throw a torque plate. Or if you could find what he's got in his, which is the old cast iron torque light, then everything there will bolt directly to the back of your engine. Huh. Uh, let's see. Danny Boyd's in the house, right? Yes, yes. Chongo, Chongo 68, Chongo here. Chongo here. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, how you doing, mate? Yeah, Spider Garage, man. I, I wish I wish I could well, we could be more specific with that, but it's just it's one of those things that's just obscure and it never really had 
you know, there's obscure and then there's they're obscure and never had any type of performance application. So it's a double loser as far as like information goes. I have, I have a question for, for the people. <laughs> since, since everybody's rolling in here and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. The engine for Kiwi's truck, we know it's like a mid-70 smog motor. Yeah. But, but to make it look correct in that 67 or 68 Dodge, whatever it is. Whatever it turns out to be. Yeah. It yeah. should be red. Unless it was a police something that it was orange, but it should be red with black accessories, correct? The black accessories. Um, so if yeah, if it was a so the motor's by it's, it's a seventy-three. Yeah. Going by the intake manifold, the carburetor. Okay, it's so it's a seventy-three. That's why it's a turquoise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no blue. Blue turquoise is sixty-nine. Yeah. Well, unless it's three eighteen. Okay. See where this red. can of worms is going. I would yes. paint it red. I would I would just paint it red. Red, because it, it would match what it's his, supposed to be. What What do you like? I don't care. No. Let's do like a, a nice <laughs> rainbow paint job. I can, yeah, exactly. I'll you know, I think it would be beautiful. Yeah, all the way across the pan and up the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, that's so okay. okay. Um, Lawrence Transmission in Ontario, Canada can sort it out for you. He's a transmission wizard. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Let's see. Um, Eric Nearing, after a hard drive loses oil pressure, could it be the oil pump motor runs good and normally? Thanks, Uncle Tony. Uh, after uh, a hard drive loses oil pressure, well, which engine? After a hard drive loses oil pressure, so it could be a partially plugged pickup. That'll do it. Could it be just tired? Just like getting could real be, heat yeah. in the oil, and it just once you get hot enough, and it then it's hot enough to lose all the There's a few things it could be. Oops. Why is it doing that to me? Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Okay. <laughs> just push the blue button. Yep. Boom. Okay. Uh, Kiwi has his guns out. He's trying to be impressive. <laughs> He's always trying to be impressive. <laughs> Please give us a torch light video. What do you, I've already done torque light videos, but what do you want specifically on a torque light video? Because I literally, they got, they literally just drop off. Yeah. Just drive it out the back of my truck onto his bench. Drop yeah. off a torque light. So tell me what you want to see and we'll make a video up just for you. Um, okay. 62, nice. John Should be a nice car. I tricked you. How did I trick you, Mexican spec? All right. Um, random tech. What tricks do you have up your sleeve for mission improbable? Oh, lots of tricks. Many, many, many tricks. Both of these guys just drove. Yeah, we did. I, I don't want to give it. I don't want to give anything away. But, we'll run, just, just, but it's it's probably gonna work. <laughs> it, it's uh, well. My comment when, when I got back was this thing has no business being this fast. <laughs> like it, it's like mm, no, some something something's going on here. Someone's snuck in some nitrous or extra something. Extra cylinders, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. It. it um, I hid two extra cylinders in the glove compartment. It, 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 yeah. It really surprised me. It's um, quite lively. And it's completely untouched. It's exactly what I got it running. It has. There's like three gallons of good gas and one gallon of like skank gas from like that you can smell. Yeah, the reeks of like you know turpentine, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, burning old gooey gas. But it rocks. Yeah, it's got a little bit of 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 a curtain. Yeah, put up a curtain. So, so we, I didn't get a chance. We have a bunch of stuff that has to go up on the wall back here. That'll suck up some sound. I just put up a curtain. So the more stuff that gets in the room, the better the sound will be. <coughs> um, 104 Speed Shop. Are you going to use that 727 behind the 392 after? Uh, sure. Well, probably, yeah. Yeah. We just got to get an adapter to go right. from the Hemi crank to the... I think you've already got that. You've already got one of those. You said that you had an adapter when you... Uh, oh, yeah, well, that other poly engine that I got has that plate that goes, yeah, I don't know whether it's a dedicated adapter to, to make the crank. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hotheads has got a lot of that stuff. But I have got that cast iron torque plate as well. Yes. Which we can use. Um, 
So what's the, is there a minus between that cast iron torch light and, and, and the, the aluminum torch light? Or other than one's got park and one doesn't? Pretty much it. That's about it? That's pretty much it. And the weight? I, well, actually, I've never, I, the last time I touched one of those cast iron torch lights, I, I, I was like 20 something years old. And I went through it, and everything inside of it was the same as the, the way I remember it. Everything inside of it was the same as the 727. But it's a very, on everything around it, it's very, I don't know what the No, I can't tell. But, you know, we'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. Chongo liked my shirt. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Chongo. Chongo likes your guns. <laughs> um, Does Mission Improbable have a traction lock rear end? Not currently. No, no. It, it, it absolutely needs it. Yeah. The distinct smell of fire stones. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't just spin the tire, it spins it violently. Monk from Philly says his ears are bleeding. And he, uh, what about? Uh, Monk from Philly's ears are bleeding. <laughs> go into his wife's cabinet and get her. <laughs> yeah, a couple, couple, couple of, couple of, you know, yeah. yeah. Then when right. you're done, you just pull the string. There you go. Yeah. That's why they call him Dr. Art. Michael Ash, Kiwi, any updates on the Mustang and the Mustang 2 front end? Um, I just put a video out on Sunday on that one, on the white Mustang, Casper, with the Mustang 2 front end. Um, if that's what you're asking about, that, that's, that's up now. Um, yeah, you said it was the first time you used that, Scott's. That's Scott's Hot Rods one, yeah. Yeah, how do you like that compared to like a... It's, uh, like that. I mean, it's, 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 it's more race bred. Mm -hmm. than um, like your heights on the TCI ones. Uh, but it's also, uh, they haven't really catered to the aftermarket as well as they could have. Like the kit comes with no, there's no plates to strengthen the chassis rail. There's no plates for where you cut out the shock towers. Um, oh, there's so no it's, measurements. It's there's not no, a first time DIY. No, no, no. Okay. It's not one you'd want to do in your, in your, you know, your garage at home unless you've done them before. Because um, you've got to build all your own. All reinforcing plates and everything. Yeah, um, and like there's no engine mounts on it. It's just a bare cross member. There's no engine mounts at all. So I, yeah, like the TCI one, you go, okay, I want a modular. I want yeah, I want a Coyote, I want a Coyote, I want a this, I want a Coyote, 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 I want a and then I'll just burn those onto the, onto the oh, cross okay. Um So, yeah, I mean, the bottom ones aren't going to go right directly onto the cross member, but they'll get me 80% of the way there. Okay. Um, Michael Morrow has got asking me, what was what has been easier, having your own YouTube channel or working for a magazine? The magazine days were rough. Well, I mean, were really rough. I was, I was at war with everybody. I was at war with... With the the publisher, I was with the advertisers, the advertising department, the, the other people who were. I was constantly fighting. I was blacklisted by the NHRA. I, it was it was a bitch. It was a bitch because I'm an asshole, and and you know it, that's just how it works. And you can't really make it in this world unless you're an asshole. YouTube has been infinitely easier in that I, I only fight with eighty percent of the people who I encounter. These two are the only ones I haven't had a fight with yet, but it'll come eventually because that's how it works. <laughs> <laughs> but I would say YouTube is easier than the magazines. Tony, did you pull the trigger on Sporty? No, no, no. I, I What's almost the Sporty. The Sportster. Ah. Yeah, I have, I have two. Two of them. Yes, they're very nice. Yeah, you, you've kind of got a thing with multiples, haven't you? Like if I like four something. XJs, if I like something, I absolutely have to have more than one of it. Right. And just the slightest variation. Like, I don't want two that are identical. They have to be, like, have a different color or like, a different... Like, like wives? Like... Yeah, well, you know, they have to have... They have, to have to... <laughs> Some different features. <laughs> Long, bruny, really. Kathy's my first wife, and she will tell you that I'm, I'm very... Good. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Right. So... Um... It's not what she told me, but... <laughs> If I like something, I have to have more than one of it, and it has to be nearly identical, but not quite. So I've got two Sportsters that are like mechanically identical, but they have different colors and trims. And I have four XJs, but each of them is each of them is the same, but each of them is a little bit different. And then there's all the ballparks. 
So it's just grand. But I, I almost bought a Royal another. So there's a spike called the Royal Enfield Classic 350, which is a silly little motorcycle. It's, it's all 350 cc single deal, you know, and it, it's they make them in India, but it's made really old school. Like I've got old metal. It, it, it's like it weighs like 550 pounds. It weighs almost as much as a sports does. Jeez. And I almost went one of those again today. Just to punish yourself, or I just need one. <laughs> it's so beautiful. It's, it, it, uh, the one that I want is red with chrome. The, the tank is chrome with like a red stripe. The, the fenders are real chrome, with like red stripe. Oh, okay. I get your pick. Okay. Yeah, okay. you 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 answer that, and I'll show you a picture of what I'm what I'm fucking jumping over here. Uh, Mexican speak. What color will the truck be? The engine should be the same color as should the whole engine be Yeah, well, yeah. Rainbow. 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 Not that I have. <laughs> well, the the truck is blue and white and rust. Red. Yeah. Yeah, and the engine compartment someone has spray bombed silver. Nice. And then um, the engine's gonna be red with chrome valve covers and a you know, aluminum intake and a, and a carburetor and I'm gonna uh, coat those uh, magnum exhaust manifolds and. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah, it'll it'll look nice. Cool. Yeah, I don't but know it's what, not gonna what, be. I don't know what color to do. The truck. We're not painting it before power tour or anything like that. No, um, and that's that's like. A year of body work anyway rockers and things and yeah yeah it needs, it needs it's missing a kind of passenger side rocker um but yeah needs a little bit of love there but um no don't really probably a, you know it might even do a patina or, or something I, like, like i said we'll just we'll come and wash it once it's running and yeah we'll bring it to your shop and you can mat clear it and yeah it's good Pres Very preserved old. yeah you yeah. know yeah. yeah look at that is that the most beautiful that's pretty. That looks like it's kind of a Royal Enfield. It's got like a little Honda influence on it. And... Rick bike. It's, yeah. Well, there's a story behind the. Well, let me show these guys because okay. what, what the hell is he talking about? Yeah, it's on both camera. Whoops. Is that is that thing just beautiful or what? So and that's for sale? Yeah, well, they make them new. Oh, they make them new? That's new. So there's a company in India called Royal Enfield. That started that, that bought the British company Royal Enfield that started out making guns and they, and they made motorcycles. So they bought this company back in like uh, 1951, 1952, and they've been producing the exact same motorcycle since 1951, whenever it was that they, they took it over. So they only just recently upgraded it about two years ago, and that's what this is. Okay. It's just an upgraded 1952 motorcycle. Hmm. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. It was cooked. Yeah, which one of those? Which one did they ever use a Hemi engine in a production boat? Thousands of them. Oh, yes. really? Yeah, the Chrysler Marine. Um, that that was actually a, a big source of Hemi's back in the it's day. Bag, this is got yeah no, this is terrible. What, what am I? Oh. Oh. <sighs> okay, there you go. There you go. You go. Well done. Um. Let's see. Looks like an old Triumph. Yeah, it's a, it's a true Brit bike. Uh, but it's made in India. Charlotte and Zimmerman, you to your Kiwi, have you run into plastic distributor cam gear or a plastic coated on a Tommy? Timing gears, yeah. Um, We're pushing plenty of plastic timing gears, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, the um, Slant 6 has a plastic distributor drive gear. Oh, really? Yeah. Danny Boyd says it's Parmesan. It's Parmesan. And, and he knows his shit. Sinners Ministry out of 96 five speed XJ. Loved it. That's what yours is, it? Is yours what year is yours? 96? 96 five speed. Yeah. 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 The red one, yeah. I have 96, two ninety eight and a 99. Um, let's see. No, they didn't just, who said that? Need metal. They didn't buy the name. They bought the company and all of the tooling. And, and that's, what they've been using ever since. Uh, Ari's here. Oh, hey, Ari. Hey, how you doing, man? Ari. Uh, what was a beast? Um, yeah, Thunderbird 1968. Kiwi, what size car have you got on your 460? Uh, and my Mustang is fuel injection, and I think it's like an 1150 CFM throttle body on, um, but it's it's port injection, um, or, you know, the intake manifold ports. Um, 
but yeah, so it's a big, um, it's a big throttle body. It's huge throttle body. Um, but I do have a big ass carburetor that I think that's a 1050 uh, quick fuel carburetor that I've got to find a home for. No, Kiwi now, if you were to build that car today, would it slow 460 or would you do a cut? It's uh, a good question. It's a good question. Um, yeah, because I built that car in 2014. So like 10, that's a, yeah, 10, 10 years. That's all. Yeah. That's an old Coyote old. was, yeah, yeah. The Coyote wasn't really a thing. Um, I don't know. Probably would, yeah. It probably would. Uh, there's just something about cubic inches. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, just, um, just the snap you get out. Yeah, the, the, that throttle response and the, the, the torque from just that from nine liters of engine because it's you know it's straight out to 557 and mm -hmm. um and it, there's just i don't know you open the hood on that thing and you just you always get a look at that so yeah. you always get a gas like it's you know when you get this ugly coyote plastic yeah. covered motor yeah yeah, yeah. Um, i get it yeah and the motors the what adds to the impression a little bit is that the motors sits fairly high in the engine bay because mm -hmm. i lowered the car right down and i moved the that Mustang I was working on the other day when that Scott's hot rod, I lifted mm -hmm. it across me about half an inch. Okay. Um, just to drop the car a little bit. Well, my one, I lifted it about two and a half inches. And we actually had to C notch the rails for the rack to go across. Oh, so you can get the pan and everything off the ground? Well, I mean, the thing was, you know, I wanted it to have like um, the right height to be nothing lower than four inches off the ground. Okay. Um, so to get that and to keep the joint on the suspension, you had to bring the body down over the suspension. Um, so the engine can only go as low as the cross member, so the engine sits quite high. Um, well, the en okay. engine's sitting in a normal place in relation to the cross member, but the body is down. Down on its channel. Um, so okay. that's like it's got a three inch cowl hood on it, and it needs two and 15 sixteenths <laughs> of that three inch cowl to make everything fit. Okay. Um, and that was actually the key reason that we went to fuel injection was that. Um, that we, we, there was just not enough room for a carburetor. Carburetor and a filter on top and everything yeah. else. Yeah, okay. there just wasn't enough room. So we went to a throttle body, which is only about two inches tall. Mm -hmm. um, and they built the air cleaner into the hood. The air cleaner actually lives in the hood. Oh, no. Yeah. Um, so, um, but yeah, there's something brutal about it. it. It You pay a little bit on the handling because it's such a big heavy motor. So up, front. up front. Yeah. Um, but hell, who cares? Yeah. Who cares? You didn't build it for handling. Well, I mean, I did want it, to, and it does handle. handle it, nice. it does handle pretty good, mm -hmm. um, but you do know it's got a big, heavy piece of iron up the front. Like you can't be. Um, it, it doesn't. If you go in deep into a corner, it doesn't. It, it's a little reluctant to change direction. <laughs> um, like if you go in committed. Yeah. Um, it may push a little. Yeah. Uh, uh, need metal. Lots, lots of things are made in the now. India makes some good stuff. They make some good stuff. They make quality pieces. Harley Davidson is in trouble. I'll tell you right now because Royal Enfield is coming to eat its lunch. You give it like three to four, three to five years, and you're going to see a, a, a big shakeup in the uh, if if the industry is even still around in three to five years. But that's another story. Um, let's see. Uh, Thunderbird, uh, any thoughts on the quick fuel carbs? I like them. I think they're excellent carburetors. You you worship them. You I, have a filter with yeah. candles. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, big, like a, just a big leap forward on uh, Holly, the original old school Holly mm -hmm. technology. Um, but quick fuel was made by two, I believe, um, the story I was told was two, two of the guys from Holly left and started making right. quick fuel because Holly didn't want to mess with the holly carburetor and they said we can make it better and they were told no nah, don't want it all right we'll do it so right. so they went out and did it on their own and holly ended up buying them back because they were kind of embarrassing them um, you know they, they took holly's you know little pride and joy and made it a bunch better um, but the original hollies are, are a little agricultural like they're pretty simple don't talk shit about the original hollies they're, they're <laughs> carburetors man. they are I mean, yeah, they're great for wide open horsepower. What else is there? Well, yeah, there's, there's this crawling around in traffic and wide open throttle. I mean, I don't understand why you need anything else. Uh, it's fucking aristocratic. Please. <laughs> this is why I don't get along with anybody. 
Uh, mm. Speaking of Cobra, uh, Tony, how many ideas do you already have for Mission Improbable? Countless, countless. It's like I can't get it out of my mind now. It's like all I can think about is all the little things I'm going to do to this thing. Uh, I'll update tomorrow because it's a run and driving truck now. We've, we've all taken it for a romp and uh, we'll update that tomorrow. Territory's asking Ari if there's, if there's Apache got a set of Rivian seats. <laughs> He's not, he's not going to admit it here if he did. <laughs> um, let's see. I keep doing that. Why do we keep doing that? I don't know. Ah, there you go. Um, let's see. Uh, Dr. Art, your 318 is looking great despite it being a flood survivor. Well, thank you. You're doing, doing a masterful job on that. I'm doing, doing my best. Um, Harley is selling a lot of 40000 Harley have forty thousand dollar bike. Yeah. Hey. Oh yeah. yeah. Really? I didn't realize they're that high. Oh yeah. Second. But I mean, I don't like me and bikes are like. Mm, yeah. yeah, me neither. But yeah, it's they're the second mortgage bike. <laughs> Great. Kiwi, you need to change speeds. You change gears. Leave it on the floor. <laughs> Jay Weiss, why is it called horsepower? Because squid hair, nobody really understands it, so we went with horsepower instead. It was all based from um, pulling plows back in the day, wasn't it? It was. Horseback. It was how much horsepower. It was how, how much how much weight a horsepower could move. A horsepower. How much weight a horse could move over X amount of time. Right. Or something like that. Mm -hmm. Actually, one of the, one of the channels did a did a really cool video. I'm trying to remember which one it is now, but they actually put a horse on a dyno. Was it a donut? I think. Well, oh, you donut, know, right? That yeah. was it. It was donut. And what did they come up with? It was about three horsepower, three or four horsepower. Something like, something like that. Like that. Yeah, yeah. Like for one horse. So it's, like, yeah. it's just an approximation. Mm. Um. My favorite feature on newer vehicles is the Bluetooth that syncs with my smartphone. If it's a company vehicle that I don't own there. Mm. How big a horse? It was a, it was a good sized horse, if I remember correctly. Doesn't the Indian motorbike name offend Native Americans? The name was banned in sport. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, when everyone's so squishy now, yes. But, you know, 20 years ago, nobody gave it. No. Yeah. No. no you know, it was, I mean, they used an Indian chief with a thing, you know, right on the fender. It was like a tribute. Yeah. The, yeah. It I drive a Cherokee. Yeah. <laughs> See, nobody ever had a problem with that. Yeah. yeah. I can think of that. I have to rip the nameplates off just to be politically yeah. correct. No. If you're going downtown, you must remove all. Charles Alert. Charles Alert 2. 550 pounds per second is one horsepower. Huh. <coughs> there you go. You learn something every day. How's the low, low compression 318 coming along? It's in a million pieces. But Dr. Art's on it and getting it back together. No, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be nice. Okay, uh, young son is saying one horsepower is 550 pounds in one foot in one second. Okay. 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 And zero has landed. Silver Eagle Cobra. Kiwi, are you daily driving large miles? Not at the moment, I'm not, no. Uh, I've got to, probably this weekend, I'm going to put some a day aside and make an exhaust for it. It's just... Uh, yeah, your ears start to ring after a while. <laughs> it took me about two days to get my hearing back fully, like after we got back from that road trip. It's, it was already killing you. Oh, well, the fumes and yeah. the noise and everything, yeah. But um, it's just pretty, pretty loud. Yeah. Plus, there's no carpet in it, there's no headlining. It's like being in a giant 55 gallon drum. You're such a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't even know what a waffle it was, so I was like 26. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was the same, but I'm a little older than that now. Yeah. Eagles MC Square, yes. Mm -hmm. Kiwi, is there a manufacturer you would recommend for a new small block Chevy for a cruiser? Uh, I I use TriStar Engines, a company called TriStar Engines. Um, you know, there's the, the, you, you'll find them pretty easy on the internet. I mean, they're not at the summits and jigs and stuff like that. 
Um, but that's who I prefer. Certainly, I've, I've bought a Chevy from them and it ran great, and I've bought a bunch of Fords from them, and yeah, they they just nice. They, they yeah, and then no problems. So that's who I'd recommend. Yeah, and Dr. Art and I say, man up and build it yourself. Small block Chevy. <laughs> I got one of them in the garage if he's interested. It actually does run very nice. Well, here you go. He's, yeah. he's got one. Yeah, you could probably buy it for less than you would buy a you know a remand one, and it's got a lot more snot to it. Tony is one one thousand and twenty fourth Cherokee after buying so many. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I have a big block four forty thousand bucks. You take the RV with it, runs great, kind of. I, 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 getting rid of engines i don't need any more thank you though but you can take an rv on the trail and push your brother with you in the rv so you could make a whole video about just absolutely just like jump one of your xj's through the rv <laughs> that way you can get to the engine and get it out that would go viral. It's not an entirely I bad idea. Just no, how do you pull an engine out of an RV first? You cream the RV and then you hook a chain to the back of the Jeep and do a burnout through the floorboards of the. Would it get views? You see, if it gets views, I'm, I'm all for it. Let's well, send it. Mm -hmm. Send it and whatever you got, send it. We'll, we'll do something with it. <laughs> I bet you he was implying that I should go there and get it. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And give him money. And that, that, would, that would be very wrong. <laughs> Barbara Coyle and Jungle Pam. Barbara was beautiful, but uh, so was Pam. I, I, could, I couldn't pick either. Um, Dodge will make a comeback with an EV version of the K can. Oh, that'll be a winner. I mean, you know, I, I, I actually, Austin's current wife, I knew very well because that was Bobby Lagana's niece. And he met, Austin met her at the uh, English Leather Calendar. She was using in the English Leather Calendar Girl winner. In like I guess it was like 1988 or 1989, and they met in English Town at a match race that we were at, and they started dating, and he's married to her now. You should start a new channel, Whistling Tony. <laughs> <laughs> we just destroy everything. Alan Alan Sheldroth, have you been working on a 427 SOHC sock motor? No, not me. I've seen them, but I've never touched them. What was that now? Uh, have you ever worked on a 427 soft motor? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Oh, you're not a big fan of them, are you? They suck. They suck. Yeah, it's, it's a bullshit yeah. engine. It has absolutely no reason. Tony, is there such a thing as a budget within reason of a nitro cackle engine build? If so, would you ever consider channeling your inner nitro genius and build one for the channel? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, if it's a cackle engine and that's all it's going to do, it's never going to see a load. You're just going to fire it up on, on nitro. You do it with a dead stock engine. It won't make any power at all. It's not going to load anything. So you could like literally take a, I mean, you could take a, a complete junkyard engine, put a, compar a, a compatible camshaft in it so you get your flames and everything, you know, to nitro, right? Cackle. They could take a bone stock engine out of a junkyard. I'll throw throw a blower on it and 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 send it. You know, it'll just sit there and cackle all day. Nitro doesn't unless it's loaded down. You know what I mean? You forget about the noise that comes out of the exhaust. The noise that comes out of the exhaust is just because nitro is such a slow burning fuel that the exhaust valve is opening into an active flame front. And that's why you get that kind of noise. But it, it, unless it's loaded down, it's not making any power. It's not going to make any more power than let's say a, a stock engine on gasoline. So, budget, stock engine. You stock said, engine on blue color for YouTube channel. He did that. He took a junkyard 5.3, built zoomies for it. Right. Ran it on nitro. And, yeah. There you go. Block three LEs. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, right yeah. on the junkyard, right on the truck. And just, <laughs> you know, right on the stand. Yeah. But yeah. And if you go back to the early days of Top Fuel, 58, 59, like, like just about the time of the, the NHRA Nitro, man. That was a very common thing where guys would just go to the junkyard. They wouldn't even take the heads off these engines. They would throw the cam out. They, they, they'd feel strip it, throw a cam in it, and then the blower and the exhaust and a magneto, and they would send it, and they would get 40 or 50 passes. 
at like 180, 190 miles an hour before the thing will finally let, you know, lay down. It wasn't until like 1960, 61, 62, that they started really specifically building nitro motors with, with girdles and all the other stuff. CW Kiwi, love your shirt. Do you offer it for sale? No, it's one I bought off the internet. Why don't uh, you sell it to them? Well, yeah, you'll know, wash it and send it to you. That's, that's his newest merch. <laughs> yeah. One, one of, it's one, one, it's one, of one. edition. One of one. <laughs> one of one. Right. Which is, and that's why you have to get the kind of insane money that you have to for that shirt, six hundred dollars, and they'll sign it. Oh, well, for six hundred dollars, I'd sign it twice. <laughs> Um, uh, old cars and music. Thunderbird, uh, the Holly Street Demon and Spreadbourne. Yep. Tuning is a bitch with the Street Demon carburetors. Yeah, that is. Street, that is Demon carburetors are weird. Uh, SYD writer. So the question these days is Did Pontiac Buick Olds produce a big block like Chevy did? Well, produce a big block, right? Well, Pontiac, no. Pontiac, no. Externally, all their, all their blocks are the same. Oldsmobile, no. No. Okay, so Pontiac and Oldsmobile, all of their, their the architecture of their blocks is the same regardless of cubic inch. Pontiac, yes, there's a small and there's a big. Yeah, the 326 Pontiacs were uh, a small block, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Mm, well, okay, no, the 326 is the same block as a 455. It's the oh, earlier really? ones. Oh, earlier than that. Okay. The earlier ones. But I, don't, I don't know what the cutoff is. Hmm. But there was no and there was no big block contact and small block contact. It was just the early engines were small. Just like the Buicks. The early Buick nail heads were small, and then they physically enlarged everything. But no, technically, they, there, was, there was Chevy had small blocks and big blocks, but none of the other divisions of General Motors did. Chrysler did, Ford did. Okay, technically there was a Pontiac bigger block. <laughs> I guess that's the way of putting it, yeah. Uh, okay, 265 and 301 Pontiacs versus 326, 3 to 455. Okay. Okay, but wait, do you really consider the 301 a Pontiac engine? No, you know what I'm talking about, right? No, yeah. that Siamese head piece of yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm not a Pontiac guy, but but my inner Pontiac guy is insulted for you to even consider calling that a Pontiac engine. <laughs> it was the first. The 301 Pontiac was the first non-rebuildable engine I ever came across, and this was like back in like the 1990s or so. I had a customer that had one of these things. It was smoking. It was just it was just wore out, and it only had like. 80, 80 or 90,000 miles on it. It was, it was toast. And I remember tearing it down and literally everything. The crankshaft was so soft it was egg shaped. Like the, the cylinder walls were, were, just, were just wasted. It was the first non rebuildable engine where this is okay. There's no hope to any of this. Toss it and get another one that I had ever come across. What's the best way to get an exhaust nut loose without. Uh, scroll up. Slant six question. Uh, get exhaust nuts loose without breaking them from a stock slant six. Is it a stupid idea with the engine hot, warm? You talk about the, the two the two nuts that, that that hold the head pipe to the manifold. Those are those are like seven sixteen studs. You're not going to break them. You're not going to break them. You use a six point because you'll round the nuts. Okay, but but uh, you're not going to break them. Just. I mean, if you got a map gas torch, it would help to warm up the manifold a little bit ahead of time, or warm up the nuts ahead of time, but you won't break this. Uncle Tony's baguette merch. What the heck? Uh, it, baguette merch? I, uh, I, I, I was uh, totaling up the um, my investment in the Jeep so far, right. one, and I, I, I used a loaf of bread. It's what I had handy, so I had a sharpie and a loaf of bread, and I just <laughs> tore a little off. Took the bread and gives to the dog and sharpie on it. Yeah, <laughs> people seem to make a big deal over this. I don't get it. 
The dog's probably ate it after you're done anyways. Yeah. I, I guess I it was it. like your, anima no, your yeah, animation yeah. about the truck the other day, too. It was kind of... A little sharpie, it adds, it adds taste. Tang, yeah. Yeah, it's a little, it makes it a little tangy. <laughs> Norm Stevens Buick had a small aluminum engine. Yeah, they did. That became yes. the that became the Rover V8, which became the 4.4 liter V8 in the Range Rover. Well, now it was also the Oldsmobile motor, right? So Oldsmobile. So the difference between a Buick and an Oldsmobile is that the Oldsmobile 215 has an extra row, extra row of cylinder bolts on the outside. Hmm. You, so you know how like like uh, Big block Chrysler's, small block Chevy's have that extra row of four cylinder head bolts on the inside. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, well, on the Oldsmobile, instead of having them in the valley, they had them on the outside under the exhaust. And that's the difference between a Buick 215 and an Olds 215. And they did that because Oldsmobile's only intention with that engine was to turbocharge it. And they wanted the clamping force on them? Yeah, and that okay. was the, uh, the, the, the jet fire in 1963. <laughs> okay, Tony, that must have cost you some breed. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, see, you don't think Oldsmobile made trucks? Well, someone's just asking about if, they, if they've seen the engine in the old big Oldsmobile truck. Where was that? Yeah. Have Oldsmobile. you guys ever seen an early Oldsmobile large truck? The the uh, the Beverly Hills the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh really? Yes, that's an old truck. Was it an REO or an old? That's an old. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, REO came after that. So, so REO, right? It was was Ransom Old, Ransom Edward Edward Old, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So when 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 Ransom Olds ran Oldsmobile, they did trucks. When General Motors took Oldsmobile. Ransom Olds went to went his own way and started REO, which is you know, the REO Speedwagon. That's Oldsmobile. Hmm. Um, Rick, Rick S. On the slant six, I mean, it's particularly the, the intake exhaust bolts. Oh, those? Yeah. Um, to the head, intake exhaust nuts to the head. head. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I would warm the motor up. I'd warm the motor up, and you know the, the thing with those, like any small, any small diameter stud, because those are five sixteenths. It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. The way you shock those things, you know, you got to put a six point on there, and then it's it's all just hitting it with the palm. Of, you know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, just, yeah give it a little. Right, yeah, it's got to be the right rhythm. You see what I'm saying? The right hit, the right rhythm, and you shock it loose, and they'll they'll come off. They won't snap. Oops. Doctor, uh, what's the work? Oh, someone's asked about the work schedule on the on Big Richard. Uh, the Big work Richard. It's I'm trying to do a video every 48 hours on Big Richard. Uh, I got a lot of extraneous other things going on at the moment right now. That happens. Yeah, but, life gets in the way. Um, that that is the plan. About, about every two days, put put out a video on, on the progress. And that keeps me, you know, that keeps the truck moving along. We don't have a lot of time. No. And then it just gets, gets me motivated up in the garage and stuff like did, that. Did I see the door was bolted back on, or was that just kind of pushed? I, yeah, I found the hinges. Oh, you found the hinges, yeah? Yeah, the, and the hinges bolt to the body, and there's like a, like a nuts or that's part of the body. Right. That was all rusted, so I had to go in and chase them and loop them up and then really ram them in. But yeah, the hinges were, were back on, and then there's a big flapper that goes inside the door, and then there's more nuts or in the door. So oh, I, I hung it on the hinge, closed it, and locked it. So nobody goes to try to open it <laughs> until I can crawl in there and put in there's like eight smaller bolts that you have to attach the hinge to the door with. Mm -hmm. But the hinges got a little play in them, so it should be pretty easy to bolt up. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, Rocco, so I want to see external seal replacement and maybe a shift kit on the 727 goal. External seal, you mean you mean the torque converter seal, you know, the front pump, or or the shift power seal, or the or the there's only there's only three external seals. Um, 
Yeah, converter tail shaft and mm. selector. Yeah. Young Sun. Uh, does your 96 Cherokee have headers or manifolds? It has headers, factory headers. Um, 91 through 91 through 01. For, so for 10 years, they used a, a factory header. Uh, it's like a tri-wide design. Hot Rod Monza, yeah, the Buick 215 and Nerova was standard back in the day, yep. No, no way you sat on that side, so you can read the comments. You know, yeah, it's easier to, yeah. Because yeah. you, guys, you guys like to talk, and that's good, that's good. Well, where's your big monitor that we requested? I, yeah, next week, <laughs> next week we'll have, we'll have Big monitor, but yes, I sat on this side so I could read. So you guys could be six inches. Channel monster salt. No, just just a, a, something bigger than this. You know, the laptop you give a twelve year old when they're being bad. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been using this since the day we started this channel. It works great. Yeah, from over here, when, when, yeah, you got old guy eyes. It's just, it's just. You know. I, I could have <laughs> bought two houses with what this laptop is made. Yeah. <laughs> Any tricks to remove brake lines, brake lines, frozen bolts? Okay, so the, the tube nuts. Mm -hmm. mm. Heat. 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 Picture man, you have storage and a nice one that has a nice flame to it. Yeah. They're, they're all different. So yeah. here's the fun part of doing this, okay? Here's the fun part of doing this. You, it's going to explode. Okay. <laughs> yeah, when you go there and you get the hose out enough, it's hey! Right. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be ready for it. I don't care what precautions you take, it's going to explode. What I do is I cut the rubber line as close to the fitting as possible. But even then, it doesn't make any difference because it's still pop. It's still going to yeah. pop the end off, yeah. Yeah, the brake fluid inside the tube reaches a boiling point, and then suddenly it reaches its flash point. And when that happens, it's just, it's like it's like a gunshot. Poof! Right, right out of the end. Of, oh, it, oh, it'll get your attention, man. But as long as you know it's going to happen, right? You know, keep your head outside of the wheel opening. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, don't stare at the flame. Yeah, yeah. Don't put your face there, right? Put your head outside Get the license plate because it's kind of a blocker. And yeah, you're reach in with the torch and just be ready because and and when it pops, literally now, that's how you know it's done. It's like when the when the uh, like when the kettle the timer in the turkey. Yeah, the timer in the turkey <laughs> or the or the, the whistle from the tea kettle. Once well, that breaks, the explosion that from the brake line tells you that it's ready to move. They just go in there with your line wrench and it'll just whoop, it'll yep. swing right out, no problem, yep. every time. Use the fire wrench, yep. Mm -hmm. And I've cut, I've cut the line away enough to get like the, the, the 3 8, seven, the eight socket like on. a six point socket, socket on. on. Yeah. Because if it's that seas in there, it's, it, you know, like it's, um, you just got to get it out somehow. I've, you know, yet, the lines I've yet to be evicted. stopped by one. Really? Never happened. Yeah. Well, I mean, maybe I happened when I was like a little kid. Sometimes they get round. Like someone's been there before you, and the, and the tube nuts just rounded off. Vice grip. Vice grip. Yeah, yeah. small vice grip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. In cahoots with Christ. That's, that's a name. Yeah. Um, Tony, on your last Sunday live, you talked about being heavy into bikes. Did you ever have a chance to meet Indy and Larry? If so, what did you think of his bikes? I sold Indy and Larry a pickup truck full of, of Yamaha XS650 stuff back around 1995, 1998, because he built a lot of those Yamahas. I, I met him for all of like, I don't know, like just, just long enough for him to say, you know, I'll take it. And he handed me a bunch of money and that was it. He was a really, he seemed like a really nice guy. Um, when I think of his bikes, the art, it's pure art, they're beautiful. The Curtis Randolph, that was Yamaha Larry. <laughs> Joe K, Tony and or Kiwi and or Dr. R. Thoughts on Porsche? I don't have any thoughts. I've, I've only had one, and it was a 914. You know, basically a Volkswagen that's shaped like a mattress. And it was, it was, for what it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, but um, I'd rather buy a rental property than a new 911, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I, I don't know if fit them really that, that well. So I got, right. I got to tell, I'm going to tell a true story. I'm going to tell, okay. tell a true story. Okay. okay. I never really, and what it was, I never understood Porsches. Okay. So I had this cousin, female cousin, that married this guy. I'm, I'm not going to say names. Okay. But he was like, he was a bougie. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? He was a <laughs> yeah. And always high-end cars. And he was a cokehead. Okay? So he had a Porsche. Uh, what was that? The 911. This is in, I'm going to say, 1980. Just about the time I was doing the magazines. So he asked me if I would do some stuff to it. He had parts that he wanted me to put on it and so on and so forth. So I said, sure. So he says, well, get a ride out to my house. And he lived in, in, in Brooklyn. And I was on Staten Island. He says, get a ride out to my house and take car back. So I'm in stuck. I, I pick up the car and I'm stuck in traffic. And I'm like, I just don't get this thing, right? I, I, just, I don't understand the appeal of this. And he had left half a joint in his ashtray. And I, you know, I had stopped smoking. I, I smoked a lot of weed, like when I was a teenager. But then, by that point, they had. Mm-hmm. And but I'm sitting on the Belt Parkway, stuck in bumper to bumper traffic. You're like, ah. And as I'm sitting in this Porsche, <laughs> trying to understand this thing, like, why? Why? What's the appeal here? Because at the time, I was driving the Roadrunners. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I, I burned down his roach, and and suddenly the car made sense. <laughs> Everything made sense. I swear to God. I swear to God. You're like, I like, oh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I understood all of the little nuances and all of the things. You know what I mean? They made perfect sense to me. It was like, I love this car. But by the time I... You ended up in Jersey instead of Staten Island? No, I got back to my house. <laughs> but when I woke up the next day, I hated it again. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, I find that for me to enjoy certain types of cars, I have to be high. Yeah, a buddy of mine restored one, an older 911 mm-hmm. Turbo. And I would just always call it the, the Volkswagen Fastback. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he, 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 like he'd laugh, but he was it pissed him off. <laughs> that's all that. That's all that nine fourteen was. Yeah, it was Mexican here with a different body, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Mexican specs saying, so you need drugs to understand the eleven. You have to understand the period of time this was. Okay, during that period of time, I was all about big block Mopars, Hemi's, and four speeds in B bodies, in bare stripper B bodies. So my language, my love language, was like open headers. You know, 6,500 RPM power shifts, right? This was, you know, so so the Porsche thing was like silly. It was just so silly, you know? My, it costs, I love my American Porsche, my 67 Corvair. <laughs> Some truth to that. Flat six. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Transaxle, all that, yeah. Kind of is an American Porsche. 911 is the end of the rainbow for driving in there. Yeah, I had a 911 uh, Turbo career. I think it was a career. Mm-hmm. Um, 86 ish or something like that. Okay. That's like a $100,000 car. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, Beautiful. good God, really? <laughs> and he pulled up on it. I'm like, yeah. 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 And then, yeah, another buddy of mine came and he said, Do you know how much those are worth? And I'm like, no. It's <laughs> 100K easy. I'm like, fuck. I'll buy a duplex and, you know. And, yeah. 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 Go there, yeah. Dave Brown. Yeah. Dave Brown, Uncle Tony Crew, no suicide. Well, good going, Dave. I'm, I'm glad to see you're still with us. Um, 960 watt. Uh, off-grid RV for power tour. Tony should build an old K car, drag car. With the wealth of Henny, make an altered drag car. Then I have a plan for that Henny. I have a plan for that Henny. But you, why, you, why would you build a, a drag car for Power Tour? There's no drag racing in, on Power Tour. Um, I'd say Chris Freeman said Carmen Gia, poor man's Porsche. I like Carmen Gia's. Yeah, they're kind of cool. That's not the right they're thing cool. said. Really? Yeah, they kind of are ugly, ugly, but that's part of what makes them cool. No. No? No, just, no. just ugly. No. <laughs> I think a, a bug has more appeal than a, than a Oh, it's just, oh just, really? Well, like a a decent with the poop's wheels and lowered a little bit, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah, done right. And, but yeah, the car Gears just look like a blob with headlights, and it's just nothing there for me. Mm. No. Dave Bowenson is asking, "What size Hemi are you putting in the truck?" It's a 392, and yeah. Kiwi just dropped everything off here today, so we'll Good. we'll get a look at those parts tomorrow or the next day. Including the new triple two barrel manifold, yeah, which is kind of cool. And what was cool is that he dropped everything off nice and filthy, so this way I have something to keep me busy. You know what I mean? I have something to look forward to. You know, like cleaning the, all the, everything. Yeah, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Most welcome. <laughs> it was 
No X three for a mod button whatsoever. <laughs> See, I thought you went out of your way to act. <laughs> no, all Kiwi's motors are just, you know, dirty. It's a thing. Dirty back it's a thing. Yeah. It's a thing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you give me, you give me, you know, the, the reason to get up. Yeah, the <laughs> reason to get up. I think Kiwi's rockers. Mm. <laughs> bourbon time. You're right, Chris Cadman. It is bourbon time. But I ain't got. I got to drive thirty minutes to get home again when I've done this. Mm -hmm. That was a nice bit about doing the lives from home. You just like, on, on Zoom, yeah, you can just yeah, just yeah. go right to bed. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to be here with us. I do. It's oh. actually more fun. It's you know, like shoulder to shoulder. Well, you know, like, right. You're always <laughs> doing it, man. Come on, credit. Yeah, <laughs> fell off your chair. <laughs> oh dear. But see, you can't do that over the over the you know the Zoom. I know thing. it's one of the benefits. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, he was like crypt like the time. No, no, it's just he's 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 one of, he's he's like a very uh, free spirited uh, you know kind of kind of, you know, know. And I'm a little paranoid, so it's like. <laughs> Um. Oh, territory Kiwi. Have you found the place to stash a 750 mil bourbon flask in large mass with a power tool? Um, hmm. well, you can put a keg of a keg, you can just, a you barrel. Know, you can get a nice barrel of bourbon in the back seat. Yeah. Just drink it down with a straw. Always put a put a blast. Cart coming along. I, I, no he, way. He, yeah, he just was like, uh, uh, you win. Yeah, yeah, you win. So, yeah, the, the, the blue card of death, which is, you know, this year available, yeah. um, was just the, um, it had a, it had a buy run. Yeah, it, it, it was for the trophy. It was yeah. pointless. It was pointless. Do you want to have a crack at this? Uh, Anthony Pena, do you guys want to take a crack at my weird Jurispark issue? I live for weird Jurispark issues. Okay, what, what's your what's your weird Doris Park issue? Uh, you open so up the Doris Park box and put in the GM module and it runs for <laughs> <laughs> You know, or just carry a spare one with you at all times. That's right. Uh, uh, okay, what's going on here? Well, Zero's, Zero's checking out. Thanks for being here, bud. All right, brother. I'll talk to you, talk to you Sunday. What do they push? What do they do? Uh oh, are we, are we dead? No, no, I don't think so. No, well, see, tech talk Jeff, is over, I guess. Jeff Hutchins always wanted to do a new Beetle turbo diesel bar harbor, put the drive train in the back. I was watching where someone put the put the late model beat up Beetle onto a um, one of those RBR things, you know, those the trail buggy things. What are they called? Oh, RCR. Razor, Razor, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, and they put the whole be the beetle body on, onto it. Oh, they put the beetle body on the like, razor? Uh, yeah, on the razor, yeah. Oh, okay. It was actually not... Because the drive train, the electrical is crap on those. So. Right. <laughs> so yesterday, I'm going uh, to Marketplace last night, okay? It's, uh, I guess, maybe 9 o'clock around there, right? Just listed. Like, they had just listed it. was a, uh, a dune buggy, okay? But it wasn't a dune buggy, it was a, a sand rail. I say dune buggy, a sand rail. Complete, okay. Sitting on it was sitting on a trailer, but it had tires, the whole roll cage, it had seats, it had everything, it had a motor in the back, whole ten yards, okay. So the ad reads a paraphrasing, okay. This was on a property we just bought, have no idea what it is, two hundred bucks, right? Two hundred bucks or what did they say? No, it was listed for two hundred bucks, mm -hmm. okay. So in the ad it said if you can if you can move it and haul it out of our yard you can have it. Nice. So I messaged and I says I can haul it can I have it? It was already sold. <laughs> it was already sold. Mm -hmm. But it would have been a blast. Oh yeah. It was a complete sand rail. Wow. I, I, I should have just said yeah, I can give you two hundred. I'll give you four hundred. Uh, yeah. yeah. Right no was it, yeah no shit really. Yeah yeah yeah. Fuck that guy, I'll give you double and I'll be there. Yeah, to pick it up. Yeah. Come pay for it now. Yeah. 
still echoing, so we're still echoing and it's really bassy. Mm. Yeah, it'll so get better. We'll, it'll get get better. Better. we'll get better. Hang in there with us, guys. Um, Iceman, uh, Dr. Art, what tuning software do you use? I'd like uh, I'd like to get into that for my late model 2005 Hemi. We're writing an Atari fuel ignition table is daunting to me. Okay, uh, HP tuners. And if you're writing, there's two things. If you're doing a Hemi, um, check out the channel of DIY Hemi Guy. Okay. And, and he's the guru for the for the for the Hemi ECUs and how to program and this and that and stuff like that. And so far as writing your own table, there's so much available online where people have say they take their Hemi and they do this mod X, bop, 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 and then they post their their tune out there that they're using. You can Copy and paste okay. that into into your tune, drive your car and adjust accordingly. Instead of starting from oh, you know, from zero, and trying to map out all, all your fuel, all your timing, all you know, oh every, you know, all the tables, yeah, stuff like that. People, have, too, people, huh? people have done it. Yeah, there's, that there's yeah. If you're starting if you're starting from scratch, um, you're gonna be there a while. So let me ask you a question. So now you drove you drove the red Jeep. Yeah. Okay. So now that's rated at 190 horsepower, and it feels like it has all 190 horsepower. Yes. How much more do you figure is available just in the tune? Probably in the tune, now that it doesn't have a cap, I would say easy 30 and probably 50 foot pounds. Really? Yes. Well, that's a lot, but there's a lot of room. You got a bird that's got a real low rev limiter on it. It's got a very conservative timing curve. And then like we're talking about the open loop, closed loop, you can, right. you can write it to um, to basically stay in, you know, like it's just fired up mode forever and, you know, put as much fuel in as you, as you want to it and it'll, it'll eat it. Interesting. Hmm. So basically you're saying is I should be able to come very, very close to the goal just with the tuning. With, with yeah, with, with the tuning and the lack of a cat and like, some traction because the Jeep has none. Mine. Mine. <laughs> it's it's glorious because you know, like we were saying before, it's got fire stones on the back and they have their own spell. They have always had their own spell when you do burnouts of the fire stone. And it, you know, I, I happen to like it. So it's it's good, but with with all those mods and plus, you know, just it's it's still on just refining it and yeah, and it and it's still I mean it runs like that, it's on garbage gas and you know, conservative timing and conservative fueling and you know, you're there's a part in the program where you know where you're asking it for you know basically like power and it, there's a delay of you know up to probably a second where it doesn't add fuel for that you turn okay. it down you turn it down to almost zero and you get instant fueling so you have all this instant power hmm. yeah. <laughs> so but but it, it was tricky it didn't for some reason it didn't want to read out maybe i'm missing something but i'll, I'll investigate that and but it is doable on that computer. It, it right? is doable on that computer, yes. Someone, Jay Weiss is asking about our age. The mix and specs says Tony is 60 or 61. What are you now? I'll be 62 in May. In May? Yeah. Mm. So I'm, I'm creeping right up on it. Yeah. I'm 62 already, so there you go. Mm -hmm. I'm the baby of the group. You're the baby. You're I'm the 56. baby face to say. Oh my god. Yeah. 56. I don't know the greyest that was and look like the, look like shit the most, but you know. I don't know. Yeah, grey. I'm not sure you if you put half we I think we're kind of neck and neck there on yeah. the grey. That's why I don't have a little beard because it's all like ginger and grey. Well that's why yeah. I I can't grow beard because for one it comes in like this and I look homeless. And it's and it's more gray. It's, you know, I look like Santa. <laughs> oh, no. I don't need it. Little kids coming running up to me for any reason. So. Uh, Hot rod Monza. What would you consider a street friendly converter stall speed? Depends on the engine, really, doesn't it? Depends on the, on the converter, because it, it, so not not all converters are built the same as far as like how they attain their stall. So, like for instance. If you have, let's say, a, a, a tight, like a, like a nitrous converter, right? You can have like a 3500 up in nitrous converter, but it's designed to be a harder breakaway. It'll it'll stall at the 3500, but it takes more. And then you've got ones that are very loose, and those are kind of like freewheel. So it just depends on on the 
different converter manufacturers for different purposes. That's why converter converter people who make converters and do converters, that's what they do because there's just so much science involved. Yeah, just just buying a oh I am from my streetcar, I'm gonna buy this, you know, fill in the blank BM or whatever right. off of you know a website. Uh, that's it might work. And you, you may hate it. So yeah, if you have a converter guy, and you're saying they're worth, you know, even on a streetcar, they're worth they're, it's worth it. Oh, well, okay, so I had I had a, a Shane, right? Mm -hmm. Make me two converters. Both were 45 pound drum cab converters. And he says, I need one nitrous converter and I need one that's just loose. And he ended up selling me, sending me two nitrous converters. I didn't know that. So I put the one nitrous converter in, in Bottle Rocket, took it out, bring like, like a 165, 60 foot, leaving in second gear, right? Just like first shot. Like, okay, this is good. We're good here, right? And then a couple of weeks later, I, I put the second converter he sent me in Sledgehammer, thinking that was a loose one. And the, the car wouldn't get out of its own way. It was just, it was still a 45 pounder converter, but it was a nitrous converter. And right. they needed something that was just going to freewheel up there. It, it needed the snot to get to the 45. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. So the yeah, big, big um, difference. Now, Joel Kaplan, Joel just asked, can you touch on brake light turn signal issues when the lights are on? I remember you talking about the switch being routed through the steering column. Um, hmm, when quite. the lights are on. Uh, okay. Depends what I mean. What, what are your issues? Is the trick. Um, so you turn your lights on and your turn signals don't work, or and it a lot depends on what kind of what kind of car. Yeah, is. what sort of vehicle? What what system? But yeah, what I mean, kind of bulbs? your turn signals and brake lights are the same filament. Yeah, it's the same bulb, um, or same part of the bulb because it's it stop tail. Um, so your stop and turn signals are the same issue. So they're the same filament. Yeah, give us a little bit more detail on them. Um, well, it's not, not the same film, it's two different films. Yeah, but one's, only, one's running lights and one's stop. Yeah, right, it's a stop 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 film and ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could have a broken filament and they, and they cross each other. I've seen that countless times. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, or the socket, sometimes sometimes the, the, the socket gets worn, people will put it in backwards. Backwards, yeah. You know, so I mean, a lot of, if, if, it's, if it's a problem that only happens but it's a brake light turn signal problem. It only happens when your lights are on. It means that you've got something back feeding, and it's either going to be the wrong bulb, an 1157 with the film with, with one of the broken filaments crossing, or an 1157 put in the socket the wrong way. Backwards. You know, Backwards. Yeah. And that's the only, those are your, really are your only choices with that. Yeah, start there. Yeah. Yeah, that's the only place where the headlights. And the running lights, brake lights, turn signals are going to are going to interface with each other. Or it could be faulty trailer light wire. <laughs> yes, Edward, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, what causes the bolt meter to twitch when you're using the turn signals? It, it's the voltage draw. Yeah, low well, amperage alternator. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's it's it's, it's measuring the, the draw that it's just the light relay. In. Yeah, yeah. You probably got like a 40, 50 amp alternator in there. We need more. Uh, let's just stare at this thing. Let's just let's just look at it quietly. Let's. <laughs> oh, it jumped. Yeah. Josh Hammond. Stall speed is the minimum speed that a machine can run. Yeah, no, no, torque converters are a different things. Stall speed is the maximum RPM the engine can attain. Does that make any sense, Josh? I, I, I get what you're saying, but in this case, when you talk about a converter, it's the highest RPM the engine can attain while locked against the transmission. If we're, if we're waiting for a good one, I have a question too. Yeah. What is your opinion for like QE318 with just the some of shimming the valves to get a little bit more pressure, a couple of hundred more RPM out of it? It depends what can was going in there, really. Well, that, that 440 lift, you know, that 340 copy can. It's, 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 it's used up. By the time you reach valve float, that can is used up. So, it's, it's, okay. it's, it's a 5,800, 6,000 RPM can tops. And the 318, the stock 
springs with those light valves. Yeah, because yeah, they're a pretty stuff that's, spring. Yeah. Yeah. So that's you. That's about it. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't bother. Shimming the rockers to attain zero wish. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. That'll free up some power, but you, you but 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 uh, but float isn't. It's not an issue with that cam. No, no. Okay. So. There you go. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and, ask, it, and it's, it's, that's why I ask here because I do that purposely. I throw that question out online, okay. <laughs> you know, and you get uh, you, all this stuff, and I'm like, okay, well, what's the real the real story? Well, you think that, about that's it. what I figured. It's it was a Spock small port movie. You're not doing anything with the bowls. You're not doing anything. With the we're, we're not doing any porting, so it's not going to flow monster. Yeah. Right. Right. Stock valves mm -hmm. and and basically a stock 340 cam. It's it, it's it. I mean. 5,500 to, to 5,800 is probably going to be like, well, it's just like, that's the end of the rainbow. You know I mean? <laughs> Still after that, it's, yeah. And then, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll spin higher, but it won't make any power up there. Right. Uh, Edward Terry, Tony, come buy my car. No. Well, that's that's a pretty short answer. What if it's a... I don't want to buy his car. I have too many cars. What if he's, what if he's got... What does he have? Okay, what do you have? What, what do you have and how much do you want for it? It won't be a Yeah, you don't know. He's, he, it might be his grandpa's car. He doesn't know how to or, fix and he just needs to tow it away. Yeah. Well, all right. Yeah, right. Let's, let's, what, what kind of car do you have? What's wrong with it and how much do you want? Um, we'll wait for him to. Yeah, because if Tony don't buy it, I might. Oh, the EV. That's the EV with the, with the 440 in it. It said car. That's the RV. Oh, oh, the RV. Hey, okay, Jeffrey Defee. Hey, Kiwi, 351 Cleveland, 10.7 compression, Aussie heads, street four speed. What cam is best for dynamic? Ah, yeah, I. I, I so my knowledge on cams is not strong. Just to be something that's going to make you good use of the head, something that, you know, in a higher RPM. It's not going to idle for shit, but it'll just scream. So, so here's the thing you guys got to understand, okay? Like, this is just a kind of universal, right? When you're talking about things specifically, these two things, camshafts and torque converters, okay? Everything is so extremely specific to your exact car that you can't ask us, you can't ask on forums, you can't, you can't ask anybody because everything is so specific. And the cam and the converter have to work together. So when you've got to make choices like that, what cam should I use, what converter should I use, you, you need to run talk. Full speed, don't forget. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, all right. Applies just the same, forget about the converter part in your situation. But generally speaking, if you're looking for information on what cam or what converter, it it's so it's like a fingerprint. To get the to get satisfactory results, to get the best results, it's like a fingerprint, and you need to talk to a cam grinder for a cam and a converter guy for the converter. And they, they need to know what each other is doing. And that's how you get the best combination without guessing, without taking a poke in the dark, without wasting money. That's how you do it. You, you talk to a cam guy, you talk to a converter guy, you make sure that the converter guy knows the cam guy and vice versa, you know what, what they're telling you. And that's how you make a decision. You don't ask like random thing dongs on YouTube, hey, what can you put in my car? Yeah, it's a tough one to answer. Well, I mean, as a, a, a general terms, like, like make sure it has a good mid range. I'm a big fan of, uh, you know, having a strong mid range in an engine because every time you grab another gear, it, it puts it straight back yeah. into the mid range. And if you don't have a strong mid range, you're not going to get up to the high RPM uh, in, in any respectable time, anyway. Yeah. But well, having a strong mid range just makes the car so much more drivable. Yeah. Like I've driven enough race engines that you know, like they don't come to life until the last 20% of their RPM range. You've got to keep it there. Otherwise you just got to keep it there all the time, and that's hard to drive on the street like that and keep your license. Well, I have to answer this one here. Chris Cadman. Uh, spring is here in the most southern part of Canada. Yes, Trudopia. What bike for summer? An 84 RZ500. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> oh, and, and, and Yamaha, and Yamaha 80, uh, 750 Nivok, no. Uh, super hot kind of what's what year super hot I mean, or 72 sporty? Oh god, I'm I'm gonna say the super hot. Okay, 
Okay, assume, assume we're talking about the leader bike. All right, um, okay. Anthony Pernit, thank you so much. Why, why did I do that? Okay. Quit, stop, quit stop. touching. Quit okay. touching. Have to stop touching. Yeah, if I touch this, it'll be okay. Yeah. There you go. Thank you for the super chat. The, the truck runs good cold. After 10 minutes, it stalls below 800 RPM, but restarts instantly. If I keep it at 1,200 to 1,500, it won't stall. Is it a bed or a spark box? Okay, one more time now. Truck runs good cold. Okay, which means it, it wants to be, the, the choke is on, I'm assuming. Uh, after 10 minutes, it stalls below 800 RPM, but restarts instantly. If I keep it at 12 to 1500, it won't stall. Is it a bad door spark box? No. No. A bad door spark box would give you uh, stuttering. It'll give you, um, okay, it, it'll, it'll manifest itself as RPM climbs or as the engine is under load. Not the way you've got it. The way you've got it is when the engine is completely unloaded is when you're having your issue. So uh, you could pretty much, unless unless you're talking about it, it's stuttering, um, missing, bucking, anything like that, it's not going to be an ignition, not going to be an ignition issue. It's, it's, no, that sounds more up on the fuel. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fuel slash vacuum slash something funny going on. Yeah. The hint is that it runs good when it's cold. Because you've either got, if it's carburetor, you've got the choke on it, and that's enriching the fuel mixture. Or if it's injected, you've got the coolant temp sensor pumping a bunch of fuel in there. And then once that goes away, and the engine is supposed to be warm, the fuel management system, whether it's carburetor or okay. injection, it thinks that it doesn't need the fuel anymore, but it does, and it takes it away. So you've got a lean condition. So it could be a vacuum leak. Um, Lots of things like that. Yeah, could totally. you be bad adjustments, bro? I mean, hmm. I, don't, I don't know what your, what your, your skill set is when it comes to adjusting carburetors. Uh, dies like a turn the key. You see that? He added to that. It isn't flooding out at idle or stumbling at idle. It just dies like I turn the key off. Yeah, it isn't flooding out at idle. It just dies like a turn the key off. Yeah, again, man, it could it could be a lean condition. Um, it 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 could it could be. Oh, okay. Um, what carburetor is on it, Anthony? Well, what we fit him to tell us what carburetor it is. Mm -hmm. um, Sean K. First time touching a carb in ten years. Finally junking my problem. Vitek, good man. Good for you. <laughs> They are coming Come back up, to the white. They're coming back up. They're coming up for sale on, on uh, like marketplace regularly now. Fitex, Fitex, um, Holly system. You know the. Yeah, because yeah. people are like this is bullshit. Give yeah. me a carburetor. I want my old carburetor. I've never had any problem with mine. With your Fitex? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. They're not. It's not every single one is a. Problem. I got. I got lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it had issues, but it, it was just software issues and. Right, like clear it up and it's, they can sit for a year. I know what they're oh, cars are up. Right, okay, but let's get let's, um, let's take your insurance. So, yeah, they furnace 351 wins a T5 trans longitude mild cam needle block performer intake. How do I choose the carb CFM secondary? Uh, T5, I'd go with uh, mechanical secondaries, and 650 would be plenty for that. No, I would, I would go a little bit bigger. Uh, so okay, is it a driver? Okay, primarily is it a, is it going to be in traffic car or primarily a performance car? Is it a toy? Because if it's a traffic car, I would I would throw an eight hundred Edelbrock on there. Um, mm -hmm. If it's a if it's a toy, a performance car, and you got to do some tuning and stuff like that, you know, uh, I would go with a, uh, a, a seven fifty. Hot. Is it a stick or automatic? Stick. T5. Oh, T5? Yeah, mechanical secondary 750 Holly. So that's if it's primary performance, Holly. If it's primary driver, Edelbrock. There's always a, a, a discrepancy between in flow between a Holly and an Edelbrock. So a, a 750 Holly will flow approximately the same as an 800 Edelbrock. So you're looking about, about it's moving about the same atmosphere through the engine. Hmm. All right, let's see what Anthony Carter. 
You keep missing the blue dot. Uh, oh, yes. But, but, uh, oh, fuck. What's the matter with you? <laughs> Um, Anthony Perna. Oh, it's a three ninety Holly. Two barrel, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no three, yeah. That's it's a it's a small four barrel. Okay. Um. Mm. Uh. That RV's come down to nothing. You'll sign the title over to you. Where? He's a sweet bastard. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Um, Anthony Perna's. Oh. Uh, okay. So, Anthony, I'm assuming you ran the gamut as far as making adjustments go, right? And you're not complaining of it. Okay. Uh, Pop the metering block off it and check for flatness on the throttle on the on the, uh, the the center of the throttle body. Check for flatness on the metering block, but the metering block's usually fine. But check for flatness on the because with how, what happens is that the center body warps, and when it warps, it it allows it allows air to be pulled, extra air to be pulled through the the fuel passages, what would be feeding the transfer slot which is what your low speed performance is going to be. So basically when it's cold and a choke is on, you're pulling fuel through the boosters, you're pulling, you're pulling whatever fuel is available through the idle circuit and through the transfer circuit, but you're also pulling fuel through the boosters because the, the, the choke is closed. Choke opens up, you lose the fuel through the booster and there's less of a signal to the idle circuitry. So I'm going to say it's probably a warped metering block. If you've, if you've, if you've covered all of the other bases, I would go with I would go with that. And if it is warped, it, you file it. You just just get a rat stale file, chuck it up in a, in a vice, and just file it. I actually did a whole video on that uh, not too long ago, maybe a year or two ago. Yeah, somebody was just asking, saying that they lost through he accidentally threw his main cap away on or didn't catch the engine, but he's able to get another main cap off eBay and can he use it? But well, you'd have to you'd have to line reline away. Yeah. Line, um and assuming the cat wasn't yeah. too far out of alignment um because yeah you can't you certainly can't just put it straight on um because he, he, yeah, you, know, you can't even mix mix main caps off the same block mm -hmm. um you know without line boring it um, because yeah. yeah it only just needs uh, you know 10 15 thou offset on the cap and suddenly you've got a bearing issue Okay, Anthony Perna saying uh, it has 20 inches of vacuum and idle, responsive as hell. Okay, but it just means your accelerator pump circuit's good. Um, if it's warped, I may send it back. Uh, it's new. Well, you just answered your own question there. You've got I, the quality control, man. I, quality control over Holly has just absolutely cratered. Um, yeah, just send it back. Send it back and try again. You never said how it ran with the old carburetor. With your last car right on there. All right, Colin L., thank you for the super chat. Hot Rod 1956 on hold. Over 2,000 miles to get heads redone. FE 360. I can get a 428 FE block with heads for $4,000 machine put together with rebuild heads. What is he saying? Hot Rod 56 on hold. Over 2,000 miles to get heads redone. Oh, okay. It's going to cost more. Oh, he wants to know: Is it better to spend the two thousand dollars to get the heads redone on his three hundred and sixty? Get a four hundred and twenty-eight EV. If you block with heads for four grand, machine put together and rebuilt heads. No, I'm going with the four hundred and twenty-eight. Yeah, it's kind of seems like a no-brainer to me, Colin. Yeah. yeah, as long as as long as it's a lot, you know, uh, it's it's definitely been done like it like they're saying it's been done. Yeah, I would take it apart. Okay, I would take it apart. Yeah, um, don't don't trust. Don't trust it. I mean, it, it it sounds like a good deal, right? Look at all the extra stuff you got. Okay, you can flip it you don't use and get some of your cash back. But don't trust it. Never trust an engine that you don't know who assembled it or the history of it or anything like that. Even if today it's brand new and and the, the ghost of Smoky Unit came and and, and, and <laughs> you know, it, yeah. got together and and right, yeah, no, don't trust it. Uh, tear it down and check everything. Uh, 
Edward Terry, free car, Tony Romo, three hits for me. I just used that phrase like right before we went online. He and I were talking about something. The Renian. Yeah, that's right. The Renian. Don't trust Smokey. <laughs> Hot Rod Monza, the crank and the 428 is bone proof. Okay. Dr. Art, would it be worth programming ECU on an MB CLK, um, a Mercedes Benz CLK 320? Can't find anybody in the States to reprogram it. What does he mean by reprogram? Just, just put a, a hotter tune in it or, or switch it from one, one to other car to the other? Or? Oh, I would yeah. presume a hotter tune. Yeah. Um, performance tune. Don't know anything about Mercedes computers. I mean, wouldn't, aren't there like any like, like AMG, don't they carry like stuff like the old direct connection where you can buy? Yeah. Yeah. You can send, you can send them there, send them, send them your ECM and they'll send it back. You're saying you can't find anyone to do it. But yeah. I mean, AMG is the part that the, 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 you want to reach out to. On that, um, hmm. Barry Kuda says there's enough guys there to do a little oh, mental oh, hacker. Nice little hacker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to see that. I yeah. mentioned Trump. Yeah, no. I, I had a hacker going last night on the couch, and Kathy says you got you got to come back into smoking, and I agree. No, me caught my wife in an accident. Oh, yeah. No. If it's Sid Wright, it's FE360, it's not really worth it. Not really. They weren't a great agent. You must learn German to tune it. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not all. It's really, it's not a lie. So. Uh, Joe's Garage. You familiar with Joe's Garage? No. We have to learn to speak German to talk to the appliances that he has a fetish over <laughs> oh, uh, no. yeah okay it's, it's just me <laughs> so, so you've, ne you've never heard of the first the first church of appliantology no no <laughs> i don't Elmo think Hoover. you had i don't think you had until 30 no. seconds ago oh god i church of the flying spaghetti monster but not the appliance anything no joe's garage Okay, well, all right. Yeah, Frank Zappa. Mm. Bill Whitaker, MGB 318 build. You're putting a 318 into a, like an M MGB sports car? Nice. Huh. Using a motor plate with spool mounts on the front and the stock MGB trans mount on the 904. Do you think you'll need to run a, run mid mounts at the rear of the block? No, I wouldn't have thought so. Nah. Nah, no. No, not with fine. an engine plate. You should be fine. Mm. Well, it's not, it's not just the engine. All right. He's using a motor plate with spool mounts on the front. So now, okay, are you using a motor plate or are you using spool mounts? Because I, I don't really understand that. Now, if you're using a stock MGB trans mount on the back, that's all the support that the transmission is going to need. Yeah. Um, but on the front of it, what are you using? Now, So that's just a plate bolted on the front of the engine then with a rubber mount instead of being bolted direct to the chassis. Yeah. They're bolting it up through a couple of rubber spool mounts. Yeah, you'll be fine. Yeah, if, you, be fine. if you've got the front of the motor locked down, then you need to have the transmission be flexible. Something in there, so, and I'm talking about just what automatic transmissions. Remember, it's just the aluminum and housing, okay? So if the engine is locked down and the transmission is locked down, then any movement right through the drivetrain or the chassis or anything like that will crack the case. So something has to be loosely mounted. It'll either be the engine on, on its mounts, right? You know, rubber mounts, or if the engine is mounted solid, then the transmission has to be mounted loose. There has to be some give somewhere in that system. See that's Andrew. Ah, thank, thank you. <laughs> Uh, what do we got? Okay, the spool mounts are from a dart. Okay, so a 73 newer dart and welded to the motor plate. I don't know what you mean, motor plate. 
I have to see what he's talking about. Unless he means just the regular engine mount brackets. And look, Fubar, the ever hopeful Fubar, put up a link to Kiwi's channel. Yeehaw, thank you, sir. And he got it, he got it right. Kiwi's, whatever that is, yes. And if we if we sit quietly for a second, mm -hmm. you'll see that he'll probably do the same for Dr. Art. Mm -hmm. I must have never heard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, get to it. Maybe no, maybe he doesn't like you. Maybe. <laughs> you no, know, we never established. Yeah. We never established relationships here. Yeah. End of time. What's better, T handle or a round ball shift? Uh, it depends what kind of wood you're in. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Honestly, that's really what it comes down to. What kind of wood are you in? Harry uh, says, uh, Kiwis Colonia Constantopia. Yes. Cost, okay. My Kiwi merch arrived today. No, it didn't, you liar. <laughs> <laughs> You're full of shit, Eric. <laughs> I still have got your stuff, though. I'm going to put it in a box and send it back to you. I want to make, because I got a couple of your reaches and I got a couple of uh, that um, remote engine starter and that stuff. So. Uh, I haven't forgotten that, and I, I still owe you some coin as well, so I'm going to get all that done one of these days. That's uh, with the writer. Who came out with the pistol grip design at Chrysler? Um, that was uh, – oh, God, I don't remember the guy's name. They actually carved it out of – I did a video on that. I actually did a video on that. I did a video on that. Just search my channel with pistol grip shifter. I forgot the guy's name. He had Didn't he carve it for himself? Yeah, he carved it for himself and he showed the guys in the, in, in in the engineering. Oh, oh look at this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chris Randolph said, Dr. Art's channel depresses me a little since I can't adopt every dog he sends me. Oh, God. A picture so, of. Oh, please. Yeah. <laughs> that stuff breaks my heart. Well, um, it's. You're doing the right thing. Yeah. You're doing the right thing. And, and it's helping. So, yeah. But uh, the, have you got any adopted? The animal people say yes, but I don't have any proof. Like, say, you know, somebody said, hey, I seen your video, and, you know, here's Lily, and I got her, and stuff like that. So, but there's there's a couple there that have been for a while. There's two German Shepherd puppy girls that have just basically grown up there. You know, they're like four months old now. I'm like, uh, and I, you know. You need some German Shepherd puppies. German Shepherd, <laughs> German Shepherd puppies. I know. I Yeah. I'll go with you tomorrow. We'll go. <laughs> And they know me by now. I go in there, they depart with everybody else. And I talk to them, they're like, hi. Oh, come on. How can you leave them there? Because there's two of them. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. You got, you got one dog that ate your house. You want me to have two? But I've got three others that are, that are you know, just, just go get them. Go get them tomorrow. They're puppies. They, they, they need you. They're, they don't they're have to there. No, I need a, I need a, like a seven-year-old, you know, if, if there was, like a seven or eight year old. Yeah, I get it. I get black it. Black German Shepherd. Oh, there wouldn't be a question. But I need I need a, a more mellow guy because I just don't want to. You know, then they'll I, you know they'll, they'll, they'll be in the pool, they'll be in the, they'll be on the roof, they'll be at the neighbor's house. You know. I feel bad for the older dogs, anyway. Puppies will generally get get scooped up. Mm. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll I'll take a senior dog, especially yeah. So it's just a matter of time. <laughs> Ari's Ari's saying I think. Still think you should start rebranding kiwi fruit for your merch. <laughs> there you go. Joe saying Tony needs more dogs. I want to live in a dog world, okay? And I'm telling you right now, I'm telling you, I, I write, I'm like one day I'm just not going to be here, okay? And she's like, what happened? Oh, tell me. Oh, he quit YouTube. He got, yes. But one day I, I will just not be doing this. I am going to get rid of every single automotive thing in my world. I keep a motorcycle or two. And I'm gonna make a dog world for myself. I'm gonna go go buy just some acreage, and I'm just gonna go empty a shelter or two, and I'm gonna make myself a dog world. That's 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 how I'm gonna end. That's that's the end of my my plan there. So even Terry wants to know what happened to your Slant Six Miata. I can't find it on your channel anyway. I find that thing now. I yeah, but have you saw what the videos are? Yeah, the videos are. The videos are there. That's the like the most popular car that you never liked. That's everybody asked about. Yeah, you know, but nobody cared about when I was doing it. I, I, I did this whole series on it, and I was like, it wasn't getting any views, and there wasn't any real enthusiasm for it, and I wasn't really into it. 
Like for, to me, the fun was actually putting it together. But then once it was together, it's like, and, yeah, yeah, exactly. I was so stoked on it too. And I, and I, I ran it around the parking lot. You know what I mean? It was, it was, it was pretty fast. It, it was, it was, I did some four wheel drifts with it. You know what I mean? It was, mm -hmm. it was fun, but yeah. Mm, yeah. You know, I looked at all the other stuff I have and the things that what I need to do to all of the other stuff. And I was like, there's just no place in my role for this. So I tried to get a couple of different people to take it. Here, here, take this car, bring it to motocross race, go do whatever you want to do it. Just just get it out of my life. Get it. And couldn't get anybody. I couldn't get anybody. Yeah, I'll do it. I'll be there this Sunday. No, never show up. No, never show up. Yeah. That happened a couple of times. So at that point, I was like, you know what? You're in my fucking way. And I just parted it out. Let's see. <laughs> Kiwi, will you be selling $60 Bibles? Um, no. It's cheap. <laughs> no. You won't see him sell anything less than like $140 Bible. Yeah. Yeah, $60 Bible, that's the trash. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah someone's going to pay for my extravagant lifestyle. Yeah. That's what your wife is for. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, no, no Bibles on the. Well, I, you know, one one day I'll get merch, but it won't be Bibles. Uh, one day you come in and tell me you'll just have Kiwi shirts printed and available on his, and on his channel <laughs> selling them. I should. <laughs> I should. That's actually a brilliant idea. That's a bad yeah, idea. Here's your it's a really here, here's bad here's your shirt Four dollars twenty-two for the year. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Torino Elite, weekend driver, Holly Mechanical versus Vacuum Second Owners, 460 Automatic. Then advise Mechanical, not best suited to auto. I, for a weekend daily, just go with the, go with the auto, but with, with the Vacuum Secondary. Yeah. You know, you know a, lot, a lot of people have realized too, the, the Holly carburetors, they're calibrated differently. The primary side, calibrated differently between the, the, the Vacuum Secondary and of uh, 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 mechanical secondary, and also the same between like a mechanical choke and an electric choke, right? They they calibrate them differently. So if it's a street driver carburetor, you want to specifically go with the most street driver thing that they have. So like an automatic choke vacuum secondary carburetor is what you want for that. Colin, thank you for the super chat. Are S and J Motors a good company for crate motors? Yeah, never heard of them. Yeah. No, I've not heard of them either. Mm -hmm. I saw that one. Two packs is in the house. Jeff Lee. Oh, hey. What's going on, bud? Didn't he send you that intake manifold? He did. Yeah. Nice. Nice. He did. He's yeah. Like he's, technically, he sent you and me an intake manifold. Uh, he? No, he sent it to you via me. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> awesome. Well done. Yeah. You just, I think you owe him for shipping, but yeah, that's another story. Ah, that seems fair. Uh, oh, Eric, Nashville area looks nice, but I keep hearing about ridiculous potholes everywhere. Yeah, we do have a few potholes. Not that bad. It's, it's potholes. Have you seen the 10 cities in California? <laughs> and you're worried about potholes? <laughs> You've got zombies. You've got zombies on drugs. They just roam freely. Yeah. And you're worried about potholes. And the pothole season here lasts like two weeks. Yeah, I mean, they're all, and they're all fixed. Yeah. And stuff but like you've that. still got drug zombies all the time yeah. everywhere in the tents trying to kill you. With machetes. With yeah. machetes, please. So, they, I mean, the guys are right. Like, like a couple of weeks a year, you got to keep your 25 profile tires in the garage. You know, but they fix them all like that because we don't, yeah. Speed Demon, get a low rider horn for the large ride. What's a low rider horn sound like? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the cucaracha, is it? The cucaracha. Mm. Uh, Tavo's in the house. How you doing, man? He's from your side. Yeah, he's down, he's down at the, the bottom end there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Mexican Spuck says Edward 
Terry has a free 1989 Chrysler Fifth Avenue for you. All right, but three is me. Where is it? Where is it? I didn't see where it is. Where is it? Edward Terry. Edward, Edward what are you, where is it, Edward? Where, where are you at? We can send you a busload of zombies. They'll get stuck in the potholes. Yeah. Liquid, liquid gold. I'm in Los Angeles. It's worth the lack of rust. Well, yeah. We don't have rust here either. <laughs> Compared to, you know. Yeah. Michigan. Detroit. Yeah. yeah. It's three hours from my shop. Come get it. Oh, God. So, so three that, hours from your, your shop. So I'm talking, I'm talking about shooting a whole day in the ass. It's three hours there, three hours back, and then whatever time it's, it takes. Yeah, that's probably an hour to load. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, See, that's a full day. What is it? It's 89 Chrysler Fifth Avenue. Does it what, run? What, what mode has that got? It's about 318. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't have that lean burn 400. No, it never 318. No, no. They, their box was done by 78. It was last year. Um, Edward, does it run? It runs. Will it make it back to Nashville? I'm not like these these YouTube superheroes that like to drive all over the country, like <laughs> taking their chances. <laughs> Will it make it back from from where you are to Nashville? And where where are you? Yeah. Oh. Chris Cadman, anyone seen the Murphy's Borough Mud Monster? No, never heard of it. Have you? No. Murphy's Borough Mud Monster. No, no? Yeah. not yet. Not yet. Maybe they're talking about your four-wheel drive extra. <laughs> My black one? That's, oh, I don't know. That's nice. It needs it needs some paint work, but it's a nice truck. Burkos, I mean, Kiwi, I'm... what's your daily? My daily at the moment is my Dodge uh, 2500 truck. Um, but um, as soon as I get an exhaust system on Marge, that's in a couple of oil leaks fixed because I've been kind of told not to leave oil on the driveway. Oh. Um, uh, Edward, can can you can you text? I, I don't want to give my. I, I I don't even know. I, I. Do you have an email address you can send? Yeah. A picture. It's it, yeah. Doctor Hart stuff at gmail dot com. It's dr dot a r t s s t u f f at gmail dot com. Doctor Hart stuff. Yeah, and we'll get it here. And, yeah, Edward, if you just just send a couple of pictures over there to Dr. Art. And uh, actually, okay, i tell you what. I've been wanting to hit the Wheels Through Time Museum. It's in the Maggie Valley right there, probably right along, right around the area that you're talking about. Say the email one more time, he says. Dr. Art Stuff, that's dr. Arts, stuff at gmail.com. Dr. Arts Stuff. Um. Liquid Gold 93 Kiwi, any more completely butchered consignment special hack jobs roll through later? No, not for a little while, actually. It's been a nice break from them. Um, Although they're very good at the views. The you, and, you and I have two videos right now that are creeping up on a million views each. You, me? I don't have ones going that big. My videos. Oh, yeah, yeah. That we did. That we did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. One of them is right at about 900,000, and the other one is like at 850,000. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, the red pickup truck. Oh, yeah. And, and the, the Cougar. And the yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think it'll be the Cougar. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen that car around for a while. I used to see it every few weeks. I see it around here. Oh, over here now. The blue one. Yeah. Oh, it's changed hands. Yeah, I've seen him drive up it's, Thompson all the time. It's yeah. changed hands then. Yeah. Because he was a Franklin guy. Uh, I wonder if he knows what he bought. A uh, great white three racing. Uh, thank you for the super chat. Is a mid '90s Dodge 5.9 Magnum a decent engine or built for moderate horsepower? It is an excellent engine to build for moderate horsepower it it is the definition of the engine to build for moderate horsepower i'm not exaggerating perfect perfect foundation hmm. 
So tell me about this wheels through time. What's that? What is that? Like a museum? It's a motorcycle museum. Oh, motorcycle museum. Yeah. Okay. The guy had the well. Well, uh, the, the guy Dale Wexler, right, uh, had a show. Uh, uh, was it Velocity? Before it was Motor Trend. And oh, well, actually one of my favorites. And he had this museum, Wheels Through Time. So he passed. He passed away, and his kid runs it now. And uh, just if you guys, if you guys are into vintage motorcycles, like old motorcycles, any motorcycles really, just Wheels Through Time. Have you been to the Barber? Have you been to the Barber Motorsports Museum? No. That's really good. They got some cool old bikes there. What kind? Of really old bike. Where is that? Um, it's south. It's about probably an, an hour or hour and a half south of here. Really? Um, been your Barber Motorsport. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they've got it's like a three story museum full of all sorts of like just cool looking old bikes. And like, and like a dozen cars, uh, but there's a racetrack out there. It's um, like, like, in Arizona, Barber Motorsports Park. What's it? Is that in Arizona? No, no, it's just quite like close to here. It's just like a, oh. a day trip to go down there and look and come home again. Oh, really? um, it's not not that far away at all. Um, I can't look on blank. I can't remember just exactly where it is. But that's well, well. I mean, I'm not really into bikes, but I just enjoyed the hell out of that place. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. They had a V12 Kawasaki motorbike. A V12. A V12. Remember, they had a six-cylinder Kawasaki production bike. Yeah, a straight six, like transverse mounted. Well, they only built a few of those. Are you sure you're not talking about the Honda, the the CBX, the M1 six-cylinder? Mm, could have been, I guess. Yeah. Um, but the guy, a guy, in, a guy in England, made Alan his own Williams. crankcase. Yes. Made his own crankcase and took two six cylinders and made them into a V12. Yep. And he also did a V8. Okay. He did a V8 as well. You got to watch both those bikes. See. Have you ever seen his videos? No. Alan Miller, the guy is just off the chain. Yeah. He sections, he sections his engines. Just yeah. It appears like willy nilly. Like he'll hacksaw motors apart mm. and then piece them all back together again. And he create when he's finished. You would never know no. it was it, it. Well, I, I had a close look at the, the V12 one and it looks factory, right? It looks factory. I looked at it and thought, wow, I never knew they made that. And then I started reading the, the big board they've got with it. It's like, ah, he, I didn't know it because they never made that. <laughs> absolute <laughs> genius. Absolutely in the guy's yeah. amazing. Um, and the V8 was actually, the V12 looked not quite there was a couple of things on it mm -hmm. uh, with the exhaust system where you had to kind of make it fit in the room where there just wasn't and it just didn't look quite right mm -hmm. but the v8 was perfect mm -hmm. like i thought it was kawasaki but it was a honda wasn't it well the uh, jim was saying the, the z1300 yeah but they, were, they built like, like 12 of those bikes no i mean it could have been i i mean it's been six or seven years since i've been down there and i'm not not that big on bikes so i could have easily got my wires cross there. Yeah. But I, what I do remember was it was green. The tank, the bodywork on it was green. I don't know if that mattered. Um, but um, it was just fabulous, gorgeous bike. Hmm. Um, but there was all sorts of weird bikes down there, like like old, like 1915, like names I've never heard of, um, like straight sixes in line, mm -hmm. um, transverse six, like every layout you could think of. And it was just fascinating. Hmm. Um, and it was it was interesting because some bikes were ugly and some bikes were just gorgeous. So I took a bunch of photos because I'm like, why is that bike gorgeous and why is that one not? Obviously, there's just you know, one little dimension. Or, yeah. yeah, just but trying to figure out the design, like where the ones that were a bit ugly, where they went wrong. Yeah. And where the ones that are just spot on, they're just like, oh. Well, that's what I was saying about and, that, and, bike, that bike I was showing you before. The, the, the Royal Enfield, the Classic 350. Mm. There's just something about it. It's yeah. just absolutely yeah. perfect. But when you've got such a small canvas on a motorbike, you know, if your seat's like three inches the wrong way. Three inches, try again. A half inch makes a difference. Yeah. When, yeah. when, you, end up, you, know, you, when you stack, you know, it disproportions, the yeah. whole bike could be ugly or it could be perfectly yeah. beautiful. Yes, yeah. but it was, it was interesting. And I studied those photos for a long time, just, that design thing interests me because I, was, because I like doing 
custom yeah. bodywork and stuff and it's like sometimes you'll do things and you go yeah that looked a lot better in my head <laughs> <laughs> and then the reality is Ooh. um but yeah so it's it fascinates me that that's a, a you should go anyone who's near there should go to barber motorsports park and try and find yeah, it so yeah no i i know about the the, the z1300 but there was very very small production numbers on those bikes so the, the, the honda the cbx the, the, there was a fair, yeah, fair number of those out there oh we got a picture of the uh it's down, yeah you don't have a whole lot of cell service oh yeah we got pictures you can turn, you can turn on the wi-fi it's in Bir birmingham alabama in oh. motorsports park okay awesome. birmingham, awesome. Alabama. That, that, that's an hour and a half yeah yeah they're, they're, um, yeah, they're just loading. Yeah, they're all fabulous, fabulous place to go. Let's see. Oh, that's the only one. No, the others are no. There, there's. Wow. Yeah, it's got yeah the half mock top and oh yeah. That's free. You want to give that to us? Yep. Let the man see. Yep. My dad had a little bird, kind of the same. Is it? Is yeah. It, is, it, is that dirty or just is that's a little bit of mold yeah but, yeah that's just a little moss yeah a little alabama decoration on it that looks too nice to to like you know hot rod really yeah yeah you would just you would just clean this up and drive it it'd just be grandma and daisy in it. yeah mm -hmm. that's a nice car driving those days yeah especially especially like a 50 because there's none on the road yeah yeah, yeah. And those were those were actually nice driving comfortable cars and yeah probably is a bit of a hard sell though like that's yeah trying it's, to get it's some very real, real money for it because it's very not, taste not, specific yeah. yeah not everyone's gonna want that but will want to buy it a lot of people will look at it and go oh that's cool you know how much but, Kathy would love that no actually I no just, no she doesn't like those cars no oh okay uh gee that that Listen, I honestly, I that's too nice of a car. I, I, I could not take that for, for free. Everyone relax, we found Kathy's new car. <laughs> you know, I, I thought you I thought you had like maybe like a demo derby like refugee type of car, and you know, we could go have you know, you know, but I know I, I don't have the heart to hurt that car in any way, shape, or form. Well, you go and get it and drive it that could be your daily driver i am i got, I got daily drivers i got cars stacked up at the freaking house I got, I got, please i got way too much i have way too much yes edward we were just looking at the pictures it's too nice of a car bro thank you sell it to somebody rock she don't like the four xjs either she's a wait till she drives this one with the five speed okay she drives this one with the five speed and she's and, and yeah She's gonna have me put a five speed and everything now. Um, wow, you guys really some time in this? What time is it? We've been at this for we're coming up on the two Come hour. Come on, yeah. closing in on two hours. Uh, let's see. Tony, did you ever use those Keith Black two seventy three pistons and rods I gave you? Oh, Busy, geez. is he? No, it's sitting around here someplace. I got so much stuff in so many freaking boxes. I think they're over in the storage units. In cahoots with Christ, I found Kathy a 68 Monaco wagon. Ooh. Yeah, no, I'm good. I, I'm good. I have <laughs> way too much stuff. Try to understand this. I have way too much stuff. There's just very specific things that I want, right? So, like, I'm, you know, very specific things. I and mean, they have to be exact that. So, it's like that bike that I'm talking about, that, that the classic 350. It has to be the red with the chrome. I don't want that bike in any other color, any other configuration, and it has to be very specific, the red with the chrome. There's somebody right. said they just, oh, in cahoots with Christ, I found Kathy a 68 Monaco wagon. I'd like that. He wants that. Yeah, yeah I like they, that. The they, need, they need Mopars. You have Monaco Mopars. wagon. Ron Barkley, you have an extra XJ wiring harness with a computer. Well, thanks. Now that I've already spent two hundred seventy-five bucks for a computer off eBay. <laughs> <laughs> but but stay tuned. But you know, might need a spare. Yeah, you may need a spare. I think Doctor Art might fry it. Uh, trying to get into it. Yes. It's possible. Uh, Mexican spec. Uh, did did uh, Kathy show you the picture that I sent? An eighty-four Mexican six. No, I, she didn't. She doesn't really talk to me, Kathy. She 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 talks to me on like Sunday nights. 
You know what I mean? You know, we make we make like we're friends and stuff. You know, but but only that now she doesn't. Went to the Kiwi Thong shop in the merch. Uh, they'll be right there with the t-shirts. Mm -hmm. So it's good to talk to your merch guy. He sent me an email, your merch guy. He's a good I've guy. Give, I've got to send him some artwork. So he's a good um, guy. But you gotta pay him what less. You can't, you know, go green. You can't pay him with no, just just green. Just cash. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, but I gotta find someone well, he'll who can, take. He'll take. You said Kathy could do the artwork. Is that right or not? You can, you can approach her with it. You can approach yeah. her with it. <laughs> I, I won't, but you could. <laughs> Because if I approach her with it, she'll rant for about 45 minutes. I'm oh, really? She's overworked and, you know, everybody wants a piece and it's just, it's terrible. But if you do it, she'll be like, sure, I'd love to. <laughs> so, you know how that works. The Kiwi Chan. Yes. <laughs> she likes you. She doesn't like you. She likes you. <laughs> uh, Barry Cooter, Jandals, not thongs. Well, I mean, they, we, Kiwis have thongs too, but you wouldn't catch me wearing one, but hey. Tony, on the other hand. I've got a lot of pajamas. A lot of pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> you know, onesies with footies oh, with a little, you know, oh, little New Zealand flag on it. And yeah. yeah. All right. Let's 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 start wrapping this thing up here. Right? Uh, I got to go home. I got so many things to do. Uh, so, so, starting off, Dr. Art. Yes, here. Yes. And of course, you guys are sub to Dr. Art. In the hot rod rehab, a, a, a lot of them are lately, and I appreciate every one of them. Well, I don't think Fubai you likes you because I didn't see him put up a link. Hmm? You picked up quite a few subs. Oh yeah. Did yeah. You, did oh, you yeah. do something to pick up Fubai? No. Because Fubai didn't put up a link for your channel. That's uh, that's okay. I'll send him some cookies. It'll be fine. All right. Okay. As long <laughs> as you guys are all right. Um. No, just more updates on Big Richard and um, some other stuff that I'm. Let's just come out of the clouds. That's maybe some interesting okay. content here. So, um, but look, look, like I said, look for the Big Richard videos about every forty-eight hours is what I'm trying to do. So, um, it should be be as I like to drag race Tony. You tell me you're saying I like to drag race Tony, or you're saying I'd like to drag race Tony. Because if you want to drag race me, forget it. I am the world's biggest pussy. I will back down from any conflict, any any challenge. So yeah, don't, you don't want to do that. Um, Terence Seymour, number 67, Newport Custom Two Door here in New Zealand. Wow, that'll be a tank in New Zealand. That'll be that's very cool. Um, let me see here. Uh, Edward Terry is saying, Pay me a little if you want, then you don't have to choose one. And we're going to talk, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. I would like to find a way that we can use that car to do something. How about we get it and we dig it and we like give it to like some that's, that's what or something? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Um, yeah. All right, but we'll we'll talk about it. And, and he's got your contact. I I genuinely appreciate the the, the generosity and the thought. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we'll we'll get we will get back to you. Thank mm -hmm. you, man. Uh, Kiwi. Yes. Kiwi, what are you, what do you have going on on your channel? That they need to uh, I've got a few interesting videos coming up. Um, just wrapped up a nice 63 Corvette. Um, that's been done. That, I've got to post that video. Um, a few others on some Mustang stuff we're doing. Uh, I've got a couple of more interesting ones coming in over the next couple of weeks. Interesting cars. Um, an old uh, 60, 66 Barracuda coming in shortly. Um, yeah, so a few, a few Mopars. Another guy just came in today. He's got a 70 Roadrunner with a big block. A tricked up big block coming in um, for a little bit of work on it. So yeah, we've got a bit of Mopar stuff coming in, which is nice for a change. From yeah. Wall to wall Mustangs. Nice to work on real car once in a while. Absolutely. Well, it's a treat. You know, it's a treat. Sid Ryder, yeah, 63 Corvette. Uh, um, not a split window, though, a roadster. Yeah, it's, it's a beautiful, uh, yeah, it's a beautiful car. Yeah, um, but that, that's, that's gone, that, that's gone home, but I've just got to put the video together for that one. Um, yeah. All right, and I, I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. It's, 
Well, we need to thank Ari and Mexican Speak. Oh, of course, no, I mean as far as like videos. Oh, you know. video. Yeah. Well, you, we just dropped off two more projects. That's right. right. I got I have, now. I have He's way got three ninety two to build. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, we got a transmission. Yeah. We transmission got, to build. Right. We got the, the Jeep is running, so well, lots of lots of stuff over the next couple of days. He's got a three eighteen stroke of poly to build. All right. Um, all of our fantastic mods. Yes. Fubar, Harry, Zero, Mexican Spec. Guys, thank you so much yes. for everything you. that you do. Um, everybody should shoot a super chat. Thank you so much. Uh, always appreciated, never expected, but always appreciated. And everybody who contributed with just your presence and your conversations, thank you so much. We equally appreciate you guys. It's insanely grateful for the ability to do this stuff. And it's thanks to you guys. So, Yes. Yeah. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, thanks. It's a, it's a fun evening. Yeah. Mm, it's a fun evening. So, all right. That's all it, right. guys. I'm going to pull the plug. All right. I'm see you guys. We're going to make it stop. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, we're going to make it stop. Oh, yeah. And it's done.